Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session uh, today. This is Karthik Srinivasan, National Business Director for IP Sales in Sonata. And I also have Hanuman Teneti, who heads our e-commerce practice. We'll just cover about the five sure short, short ways of data-driven unified e-commerce, how it influences the market and how it changes the market. According to a renowned global research firm, the global e-commerce industry is expected to be around $4.5 trillion by 2021. And none of us can actually afford to neglect digital commerce as 56% of the purchase happening in store is actually influenced by the digital commerce. The research online and the purchase, uh, purchase offline is currently the trend which is happening. So heading uh, towards the uh, webinar today, if there is any questions in the middle, please do uh, point it out to the questions column there, which is mentioned uh, in the deck there. So now, uh, Hanuman, welcome to the session. And uh, can you just brief us about what are the five short, short ways that we are covering today? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Karthik, and uh, good morning to all. So, so when you in in today's world, when you look at um, unified commerce. And, and the importance of unified commerce. Uh, it's, it's all and very important that we understand the importance of, of data in, uh, in, in for the unified commerce. How does, the, how does data play an important part in the whole thing, right? And, and the other important aspect being is that there are data is used today in many ways and many many functions and 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 let's let's see how it works on that so one of the critical thing is around personalization your ability to offer personalized recommendations to your customers so that's 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 one important aspect in today's world when you do not have one monolithic uh, system and you have multiple multi multi uh, multiple systems which are essentially best of breed, uh, integration plays an important aspect. How do you integrate these systems? How does data seamlessly flow between the systems becomes very important. The other, other aspect being around uh, social media. So there's, uh, there's a lot of data that is again there in social media or through social media. How do you harness that um, data and, and make, make, um, make use of that? Uh, then the fourth aspect is analytics, the whole aspect around data driven analytics and how do you uh, do those do those things and how do you make those decisions around it. And last not the least is is around security. Uh, how do you ensure that the data is secure with 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 now so many data regulations and uh, coming up and and being there. It is also important that how secure is your data and how do you have systems which essentially ensure that your data is secure. When I mean data, it is your customer data. It could be, uh, it could be other other information which is which is proprietary for, from your perspective. So, so what we plan to do in in the in the webinar today is obviously uh, get into more details around each of this, and 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 we'll see how it how it goes on. Thanks, uh, Hanuman. So when we are talking about personalization, so this is becoming a buzzword in the current scheme of things. So how are we addressing that? Right. So, so personalization, when you look at it, uh, this, this is one important aspect whenever you want to talk about customer engagement. How do you manage to do your customer engagement is, is a definition uh, and, and the most, most important thing in today's, today's world especially when you're look, looking at a unified commerce. And when I mean unified commerce, it is not only looking at it from a web perspective or a mobile perspective, but in all other channels also. I mean, it could be uh, your your interaction with your customer in your store. It could be in terms of a call center, so everywhere. So in, a, ability to know your customer and the importance of having a customer 360 degree view, okay, which, which essentially captures all the preferences, the past uh, buying behavior of that customer, right, becomes very important uh, for for us to have. And then this this data, uh, which is which is important. I mean, the recommendations that you are offering, the uh, the the I mean, suggestions that you want to give to your customer, right, has to be independent of 
whatever is the medium or the channel that the customer is coming through right so it cannot be said that yeah if i know that a customer is an online customer for me and i have all the information i should be able to pass on or identify that customer as soon as that person walks into my store so how how do i do that right and and then the other other important aspect is also uh, specifically when it comes to it's not only about how do you offer a 360 degree view of your own company right to the customer so it, it's so it's not only about you knowing the customer 360 but it's also how how the customer knows your company's 360 degree because that's another important aspect so how do you ensure that your data the information that you want to pass on to the customer how effectively can it be done right and then this is this is very important specifically uh in in the retail world uh when you look at look at any any b2c implementations and and where you're looking at retailers and and things like that but but more importantly what we have seen is that the importance is also coming up uh especially when it comes to uh customers like like who are who are especially working on the b2b side of things which is which is like cpg companies distribution companies and things like that so where again now more and more act activities or actions are being looked up that we have better personalization that we could essentially do so so having said that so the importance of of the the data and how do you manage to get that so because it, it was interesting because for a, for a customer of ours right it was uh, where we were doing an implementation of e-commerce right they they were they were keen to in, to see to it that that whatever is so it was it was essentially a a, a fashion fashion uh, designing uh, firm so there where they wanted to be able to pass on the information about how that product is made so it is a handloom and and handicraft uh, this thing so what is it made how is it made who is the person the actual artisan who's worked on it so it is it is such information which is then is is effectively how effectively that can be passed on which then essentially not only engages the customer not only from the perspective that yeah this is this is a product that i'm buying but it's also about gives you more information which helps him in terms of actually relate to the product better and actually make an effective sale Thanks, Anuman. Uh, so personalization becoming more and more a key aspect about uh, how the e-commerce world is evolving. So coming to the second point on the integration of data, the key data sources that has to be considered while planning the implementation or an upgrade of an existing e-commerce. How do we exactly or how do we actually do it? Right. That's that's actually an important question uh, because because in, as, I, as I said earlier, Okay, with with more and more systems being being uh, in use whenever whenever you are looking at um, from a from an end to end customer journey perspective, it is more and more important that how we can get this data and and be able to pass it on to the customer at at any stage, right? So so the one of the important aspect uh, around around integration is that that how do you ensure that this data moves or or moves across these systems seamlessly without without any uh, any time lag it's on a real time basis right and and more as i said uh, it, the importance of this data being able to be passed through uh, through multiple i would say stakeholders in your whole customer journey journey so it could be related to customer it could be related to other third party service service providers right and and partners and and then the the whole aspect is that how do you ensure that um, it is it is more automated right so like taking a, another example again um, in say for in in terms of a retail uh, scenario right today with more and more different models of 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 uh, i would say business coming up right wherein the your people have moved away from the traditional uh, model wherein uh, you had multiple stores and you have a central warehouse right any orders that used to come from the central warehouse 
or other from the web or any other medium essentially used to go to the central warehouse and from the central warehouse the distribution of the product is to happen but but then that is not as uh, people are finding that that's not really an effective way of doing business because because a it is it is you're limited to whatever is the stock available over there you need to overstock sometimes you have problems with delivery times because you're having one central warehouse and 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 hence delivery times increase and things like that so it becomes now the models have changed to essentially using your store so if you are a brick and mortar store and having an online presence right it becomes uh, more and more important right that how do you ensure that these brick and mortar stores that you have can become uh, delivery centers right uh, so the the challenge over there obviously is that how do you ensure that the stock availability which is there in every store is available for for somebody when 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 um, when somebody is going online so that you don't have scenarios where you have stockouts how do you ensure that that when somebody walks into a store you still have enough of stock available for that particular person as well as ensure that you have stock or commitments that have been made to the online customers is also met right so so in that sense uh, the, the the integration around it because this is exactly what we had faced for for a customer of ours right uh, which which where they wanted to use their, their different delivery centers as um, as fulfillment units or fulfillment centers right so the ability for us to be able to integrate their different systems it could be their own legacy systems which were there and and obviously these systems may may uh, were were in a state where we could not build a lot of um, i mean uh, integrations and things like that but then however we managed to get the data out from there so that it is available in a near real time basis to the online customer and hence ensure that a the data is available b the customer engagement is as seamless as possible and you don't have any um, customer unhappy customers so so essentially that being the case it is also important that that the systems that you are looking at are scalable right and uh, and then you have an optimized solution around that so that that is essentially what we need to look at from an integration point of view thanks anumit that that shows the importance of integration and how it affects and impacts the growth of an e-commerce business and coming to the third point which is uh, social which you had covered having gen y and millennials being more of the people who are buying online currently how do we have the social media marketing done and how significant is that to have that social media integration done right so so essentially uh, when you look at social media i mean because that that's one one channel right which is essentially opened up uh, a lot of uh, ways by which uh, a particular i would say a, a company or an organization can can effectively sell uh, their their products or sell their um, services as well as products and and then for that the uh, the important aspect is that how do you ensure that your marketing that you are essentially doing on any of these social media sites i mean it be it on things like linkedin or facebook or or even google for instance right how do you ensure that the marketing that you are doing is is also ensure and you effectively manage that when somebody searches for it your product or your name comes up as much so so that becomes very important and then for this i mean uh it is it is obviously a very nowadays a very used and abused word in terms of search engine optimization and things like that so that becomes very important uh in terms of how you how you're going to manage how is your system going to also manage that that it has in inbuilt search engine optimization uh techniques right which which then can be used by uh by the companies or organizations effectively to be able to um to 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 put up their their ads or campaigns in in the social media uh because this also is is uh, important because now earlier when when people used to talk about social media it was essentially sort of a, a one way uh, uh way uh, option wherein somebody goes into a page they like like a particular product 
okay and then they would like to share it with their friends or their network and things like that so that is that is that was what people used to look at but now there is more and more it's become more of a two way process wherein somebody when when it when can put up an ad on say a facebook and from from facebook how do you ensure that that information essentially then makes somebody land up on your website right so so it's it's a two way traffic in that sense and and again over here you have it it is there are multiple social media uh, options that are available so you need to obviously look at which is the best that you would want to go with and uh, and and work on right and uh, so that's that's the key over there and uh, the other important aspect is the innovative business models that that social media has now come up with so how does your system ensure that you can you can adopt those in your way you would want to interact with customers great so that's that's the key important feature because by doing a marketing with advertisement or the social media uh, that that actually reduces a lot of uh, investment on the marketing as well so coming to the next point uh, so everybody is talking about analytics so analytics becoming a key factor again in the scheme of things for uh, e-commerce so how do we put that into optimal use and what are the ways and means that we use that for the customers to make an informed decision of how they take the, their business so when you look at analytics um, primarily uh, if you if you look at i mean it can start off with as something as simple as a report right to to something which is very um, i mean i would say where you're talking about say something to do with say recommendations or or um, and in terms of how you are going to manage things like real time data right so it it is it is it is what the way you look at it is is it information that you have okay which is a uh, post mortem information to what you can do in for for in the future and as as recommendation so so it is a whole thing and and as as um, many people have said this is the new gold dust that that essentially people uh, talk about right uh, the important aspect uh, being is that um, you have data any any transaction system that you would have is essentially capturing a lot and lot of data now the important aspect is how do you ensure that this data that you're getting in which is essentially there in different silos right how are you able to string the whole thing together right get a meaningful insight out of that um, uh, i would say out of that information right and then use it to your benefit in terms of either making decision making okay or or it could be in terms of making taking any actions around it right so um, so when you look at a, a classical example um, uh, for on the on the importance of uh, data right is is essentially the fact that say for instance you have a online store for instance and you so when today when you are an online store and and people ask for um, products to be delivered uh, to your i mean to their home so you more or less have a lot of information about that customer you have you have his details you have his address so you can more or less make out which locality is based out of and then you have his buying pattern so you have a lot of information that you are um, essentially uh, gathering but when the same person walks into a store uh, the problem is that you don't have any information that you are capturing today about that really about the customer right uh, because so so hence what happens is this, if the same customer who is who is coming online actually comes um, comes to your store to the offline store uh there is obviously a problem in terms of your ability to a identify him uh b is offer make any offers or make any suggestions or based on his buying pattern or their buying pattern how do you want to offer so it it becomes very important in in how do you string this together say it could be based on say a simple thing like a loyalty 
right? So you could have a loyalty information, which essentially could then possibly help you get that information together. Or, or nowadays there are other innovative mechanisms that people are also looking around, which which then helps you in terms of. So earlier um, they used to talk about uh, customer registration and a, and a loyalty card and things like that. But then nowadays nobody talks about the loyalty card, which just about uh, a, a unique identification, which could be your mobile number. Essentially, is being used for for loyalty purposes. So. So in in our in our in in the Cartopia system that we also have is where we have also tried to to ensure that how do we manage the both offline and online uh, systems and and uh, how do we try to bring those um, uh, the data which is there together, which then helps you in terms of um, of of actually managing the whole whole, uh, I would say, customer lifecycle journey, or it could be also the product lifecycle that you would want to look at, right? Or or it also could be in terms of information about, say, the competition or, or anything about your social social uh, uh, activities that are being done. So how do you can get that whole thing together? So the important aspect, I mean, to sum it is, is that how best can we use data for for the decision making and uh, and ensure that it is used uh, to effectively ensure that we sell more and things like that. Thanks, Anuman. So that that elaborates as to how critical uh, it is for us to have an informed decision using analytics being a part, a very critical part for uh, having it built on top of the e-commerce platform. So now we have been talking about the social media, the analytics, the integration part, and the personalization. All the four have been one or the other way. It's synced with the security part of it and the data part of it. The data being heavily populated. How secure is this going to be? And that is going to be a very critical factor for all the customers because people are talking about breach of data and uh, we, we have a classic example in the European uh, continent where we have uh, people not allowed to use personalized data. So how are we ensuring that we have the best in class security feature for our platform? Right. So, I mean, uh, when in, in May 2018, when, when GDPR was implemented in Europe, okay, well, I mean, obviously all, all the systems I mean, all all the service uh, providers or all the products, right? We had to ensure that that it it was GDPR compliant. Okay, uh, but but then um, but then at that point of time, uh, we also were were aware of of that India is also putting together a data privacy framework, and which which sort of came out in in the month of August. And yes, to it is yet to become a, a, a law and things like that. But but essentially, that is that is an area which which people are um, focusing on, and 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 this whole thing around data becoming very because because one aspect is that data is in some fashion a double-edged sword. I mean, it's because the the need or, or the importance of data. It, it is there because then that helps you in terms of things like refining whether it's your whether it's your as you said the personalization or it could be in terms of integration and things like that but but on the other side it is uh, data which falls into a wrong hands can also become very very um, and you keep hearing about it in the news in terms of what happened with with yahoo and um, and, and things like that right and and yesterday it again came up saying that um, there, there are some other issues which are which are there in Quera and things like that so so it's important that 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 the systems that we have a should be compliant okay with with whatever is um, are the are the i would say rules of the land okay whether it is requirement for gdpr or whether it should be requirements which are there for your data privacy framework that has been put together so that becomes very key okay and 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 then there because this these frameworks essentially are our regulatory uh, information is that it is giving 
a lot of freedom to the consumer right to be able to decide on what is the information that they would want to share and also what is the information that they do not want to share so essentially it becomes very important from a from a system okay be it an e-commerce system or mobile app or any any customer engagement or customer facing system it needs to be um, i would say within the boundaries of or should comply with with these rules right but then but then there is there is the whole other aspect uh, which is uh, which is also there okay around um, around uh, when it comes to when you look at things like encryption right how are you ensuring that the data that you are storing is also uh, encrypted right and uh, there is uh, so that so that that part is is taken off because it becomes also very important uh, when you look at uh, look at companies which are which operate in a in a multi country environment right and and the fact of the important is that where is all this data located right and and how are you doing around the security around it and things like that so there's a lot of lot of focus around around testing and around that and and you manage manage the whole thing around that right so so essentially uh, so there is there is a lot of focus that is there on on the information uh, security or the data security and and uh, and cartopia as a as a product okay uh, is uh, is also it takes into account um, that that we try to maintain the security okay and that that is another important aspect so so when, in in a in some fashion to summarize okay whatever we have been discussing right um, so when you look at look at it from from three important aspects okay uh, for any platform you you have to look at it from one is from the customer angle right and the most important thing is how do you look at the how do you bring about awareness so this awareness could come through the different channels that that you essentially go about right it could be either through a, a search engine optimization it could be through campaigns that you're running social media and things like that right the whole aspect about once you have acquired that customer okay so once the whole process of acquisition and then the retention so how do you ensure that the the journey of that customer or interaction of the customer with you is 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 uh, i would say seamless right and uh, and so the important is how do you look at recommendation support and all that aspect then the then the the other important aspect is the product that you have or the service that you have right how do you ensure that this information is is passed on and is made available to all the all the people and this and then that data that information is something which is uh, available right and and then finally it is it is about the the operations okay and uh, and then how do you ensure that there's efficiency in terms of uh, operations and and uh, in terms of when you look at it from aspects in terms of um, automation and and things like that so uh, the other important way is that any system that you look at okay uh, the way we believe uh, at sonata uh, is that it is important that they need to be open which essentially means that it can uh, it can be built on 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 open platforms or open technologies right which which then enables you to um, interact and build uh, without any proprietary um, information or knowledge and things like that it is important that it is scalable okay and and the other other important aspect around around the scalability uh, is 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 that it needs to be as as people say infinitely scalable so essentially it can take into account a newer either a newer business model it could be taking account in in, in terms of volume of transactions it can it can be uh, it could be also in terms of of how you look at uh, whether it it is for a different i would say you are you are doing work in a particular industry or a particular business model how do you how you are able to change your business model and things like that uh, 
then the then the third aspect is that the system should be connected right which essentially means that it needs to have have uh, i would say apis or um, or uh, connections that it should be allowed allowed to you to do it with other systems right and um, and then it needs to allow you to uh, integrate whether it is from from a, in a typical e-commerce scenario if you look at it you have suppliers you may have your customers you may have service providers you have payment gateway and then you have other systems at the back end which is which could be your erps and things like that so how how well is the system geared for it to be uh, connected and finally the aspect of what we were also been talking about for the past past um, half an hour essentially the importance of of data which essentially makes the system intelligent right so it should be something that should be able to uh, do stuff uh, on its own and 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 then work it out so so that's that's what uh, we essentially had um to uh, to talk about um specifically from um uh, from 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 the whole and then coming summing up the whole uh, title uh, of um, of the system of of this particular webinar uh is is in terms of how you how you look at data uh and and drive uh, drive your uniform uh, unified or uh, e-commerce uh, strategy right so thanks thanks a lot for for joining uh i see there are a couple of questions um so i possibly we could we could go through that right um so what i see one question which says um right how should we go about uh, this unified e-commerce journey what are the preparations that need to be done so so yeah i mean that's 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 an interesting question uh, and and this is obviously a question that that comes up uh, quite a lot uh, during my interactions i am sure karthik's interactions also uh, with with many prospects and customers um so i would say the first first thing that one needs to um, put together i would say is i would say something like what is your digital agenda okay so when i when i say a digital agenda is that because when you look at e-commerce or unified e-commerce right there are multiple as i said there are multiple channels to it and things like that and and most of these channels are typically are digital of nature i mean you talked about social media we talked about e-commerce mobile right and uh, and things like that so so what is the agenda that you would want to do what is that you would want to look at right uh, as a business right want to achieve out of this whole whole thing so that becomes the first thing that we need to put together and once having put that together right is then we need to create what i would term as a road map right a, a, i would say a digital road map in terms of what are the things that you would want to achieve right in the short term in the near term and in the long term so when i mean short term i'm talking about a time frame of anything less than say 6 months near term could be something which is from say 6 months to 18 months and and long term could be anything more than 18 months right because because most of you or all of us uh, as as an organizations uh, that we are we have already have made investments in different systems right so it is it is very important that we look at those systems and see how we can bring those things into your whole digital roadmap so that becomes the key aspect because because just because you want to go digital it it would not mean or doesn't mean that you need to rip apart everything that you have and then then start something fresh right so so the so the way you need to look at in the yeah in uh in the short term and near term is to see how you can string these things together right and 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 try to achieve that what is your road map that you need to have and once that is done then you could look at possibly at 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 a at a long term basis and then look at if these systems will help you achieve the the final uh, i would say agenda that you had set forth Uh, right in the beginning 
and then you can look at different systems uh, uh, which need to possibly look at a refresh of a system and things like that right so so the key is is that we need to first put a goal or set a goal for ourselves in terms of what is that we would need to do we need to chart out the road as to how i we could plan to achieve doing it right and 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 we at sonata we've been we've been trying to help our customers uh, at many stages of of trying to put this right from trying to put the agenda to trying to put the journey together for them right uh, and then once that is done then we can look at the systems that are that are required right for 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 you to achieve that and can what can be fixed uh, or or changed that need to be help you achieve it in in these three three buckets so that that's the way i would say that we should essentially uh, look at right so, uh, so that's that's uh, one um, right so kartik you would want to have uh, yeah, or maybe share you. a couple of your experience that you have been seeing in the market yeah the couple of experiences that has come up in the market is primarily around the data strategy and how do we personalize data how can we optimally use it and so those are the points which has been covered today and thanks a lot for that uh, and what could be the way that we approach customers uh, we do we address them from the saas model or do we address them on their uh, requirement from uh, their on premise model so which one uh, will because these are the primary questions which come up because people primarily want to go on the saas model now and uh, there are certain people who still want to go on the on premise so which could be the better way for them to adapt and uh, go on right so so i mean there are i would the way i put it is is that there are merits in both and i would say there are not so good points or demerits which are there in both right it is something which is i would say it's sort of a a, a a a decision that is very specific to an organization to decide how how they would want to do uh, because because in today's world with um, i mean with this lot, a lot of discussion that we had around integration and things like that so essentially having systems in in different uh places i mean some systems your erp typically would be on say on prem right your e commerce may be on cloud okay and uh, and things like that so so essentially from that perspective um, it's not a problem right but when it comes to your the the business model that you would want to go with right whether you want to go so you want to go for an e-commerce should i go a saas based model or should i buy the licenses and then then put it because 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 the 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 licensing model with with most of the e-commerce systems is is about whether it is a one time purchase or whether it's a pay as you go sort of scenario right and and both these systems can be on the cloud and and things like that so that that is not more of a important but is is that what is the i would say the investment that that somebody would like to do right uh, in in such a model is one key which will differentiate as to whether you want to go this way or that way the second thing which i see is what is the expertise that they have right um uh, okay so uh, uh, yeah what is the expertise that they have right in terms of um, uh, internally for being able to manage a system like that right so so what what um, a saas based model essentially offers you is that it it is it is where you do not have to do an upfront payment for the licensing of your system right it is more or less something like you do as a pay as you go right it's it's so essentially it is based on 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 uh, on uh, let's say your usage or it could be based on in terms of how you how you are it could be based on number of transactions it could be based on the or the revenue that is getting through that particular system and things like that so there are different metrics by which you could you could do that right but the advantage as i said is primarily that your investment you don't it's it's like 
it's a classical debate on whether you want it to be a capex or an opex right so when you look at it uh, from a saas bit model it's essentially an opex that you are having on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis that you your outflows are right and it's also is a is an interesting model when you are trying to start off a particular say a channel so you are a brick and mortar store right or you are a, 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 a i would say a a distributor a manufacturer distributor right who is now trying to look at a new channel for instance right so in such cases uh, you may not be sure in terms of of how well that model will work and things like that and you would want to take some baby steps so in that scenarios a saas based model also can be helpful because then you can take those baby saas steps your your outflow from a from a money perspective also will not be much because this will be based on as i said the metrics are typically based on number of transactions and things like that so essentially then it helps you in terms of your outflows can be managed better and once you once you reach a particular critical mass right at that stage you can then take a call of a if required bring this into an on prem or a or a or a, a licensing or a perpetual license model or you could if you like you could still continue on that thanks a lot anand i think uh, we have covered almost uh, the points that we had uh, discussed about and we also have the cartopia brochure in the handout so you can uh, have a look at the brochures uh, which are which is available there and uh, please do reach out to us uh, for any further queries we'll be very happy to take it up and uh, be a solutioning partner for everyone who's attending this call thanks a lot hanuman uh, for uh, sharing out your time and uh, it's it was really an eye opener thanks a lot thank you